One measure of successive knee surgery is post-surgical range of motion for the knee joint. Post-surgical range of motion in degrees was recorded for 12 patients who had knee surgery following a knee dislocation. The age of each patient was also recorded. The data are given in the chart. Here is the mini tab output. There's a whole bunch of stuff there. And then we have our directions. Find the equation for the LSRL. Calculate the residual for patient nine and is the model, excuse me, is the LSRL a reasonable fit for the data? All right, so with all that, let's see if we can spot our two numerical variables. And the way the chart's given, it's not too bad. We can see it, right? Here's age and here is range of motion. All right, so I have range of motion in degrees and age, I'm gonna assume this age is coming in years. It doesn't actually officially say it, but that's, that's a, a, a safe assumption. When you hear degrees, I want you to think about, you have this knee and you can rotate it, you know, like 90 degrees, 110 degrees, 150 degrees, and ultimately you'd like to be able to rotate it flat at 180 degrees. All right, so with that, I've got my two numerical variables. I'm gonna clear out my lists and I'm gonna get all my data in there and I'm gonna make a scatter plot because I don't wanna see what I think out of all of this. All right, so here we go. Data entry. Okay, so taking a look, I see that I've got same number of X values as Y values. I'm gonna hope I didn't make a typo making my data entry. And before I get going, I mean, just look at what we got. It looks like over here, I had a young person coming in at 14 years old, getting knee replacement surgery or knee, having surgery following a knee dislocation. That went up to, it looks like 40 years old was the oldest patient I had. And how much were we rotating? Looks like this, this young, kid could only rotate 108 degrees and potentially we got up to it's looking like 154 degrees for that patient so just like to get some gut feelings on what's going on let me check this i've got a residual plot on so let me go back to my original scatter plot for right now let me go into my y equals and clear everything out from my last problem and now i'll hit some zoom nine okay so taking a look at that, that's not the world's greatest scatter plot. It's not the worst either, right? I can kind of see a line here. To me, I think that looks moderate. That would be my guess. I don't know my, um, my R value yet, but I, I think that's around a moderate linear relationship. And all that's fine and good, but let's answer these questions in the order given, right? Find the equation for the LSRL. All right, so I can do that. Let's go stack calculate. All right, so when I look at this, I'm seeing that there's my y-intercept, there's my slope, oh, and there's my r at 0.55. So it, it's technically moderate, but bordering on weak, and, and that seems to be consistent with what I saw in my scatter plot. All right, so I'm gonna take these three lines, and I'm gonna rewrite them with the midterm level answer. So again, I'm not gonna use a and b, I'm gonna plug in my particular numbers. I'm also not gonna use y and x, I'm gonna use range of motion and age, and I'm gonna make sure I put the hat here. So I wanna take those first three lines from my calculator and write up a midterm level answer. So let's, let's do that here. Okay, so for my LSRL, I think I can predict your range of motion. With the equation, and I'll go three decimals because I've been doing that tonight. 107.583 plus 0.871 times age. Okay. So that's what I think my LSRL is. Okay, so there's the, oops, let me write that a little higher. All right, so there's the, answer for the first part of that question. Okay, so that's part one, got that. 
Next it says calculate the residual for patient nine. All right, so if I want residuals, all right, residuals are always an actual y value minus a predicted y value. And if we remember, our y values are range of motion. So for patient nine, I want to get this patient's, oops, let me write equals, actual weight range of motion. I'm going to write this as ROM minus predicted range of motion. All right, so for patient nine, let's go find patient nine and see what this patient's actual range of motion was. So if I'm looking for patient nine, it looks like this 14-year-old kid had 108 degrees for their actual range of motion, okay? You will always get your actual the y values from your raw data. Okay, great. Now let's find the kid's predicted range of motion. If I want my predicted values, I need to go into my predicting equation. So just off to the side here, all right, I need to find the predicted range of motion for patient nine. So this would be 107.583 minus 0.871 and the, kid, the age for that patient was 14 years old. So let's see what this number is, and that will quite literally be my predicted range of motion. That's what the hat means, predicted range of motion. All right, so let's see. This kid will be 107.583 minus 0.871 times 14. It's looking like the predicted range of motion was one, why do I feel like I have this number off? Something to do. Oh, I know why. I, I've just seen it. I have a plus sign here and a minus sign here. So that's my error. Sorry, I, I knew something was a little off and I couldn't figure out where it was. So let me redo this. I apologize for the error. I just I knew something was a little funky. Let me put the plus here. Yeah, that's the number I remember getting in the past because I've done this problem before, but it's been, a, it's been a while. So I've got here being 119.777 degrees. So just so we're, we're aware, I, I was plugging in 14 for the age, but I had a copier, I had a typo. I made this plus into a minus, and I knew the number that I was, get, was getting wasn't what I wanted. So again, this kid's predicted range of motion was 119, but you can see I overestimated it because we only actually saw 108 degrees. So I'm gonna subtract from this 119.777, all right? And then let's see what we've got here. So we'll go 108 minus 119.777, and I should be getting a residual of negative 11.777 degrees. Great, so there's the second question answered. Nailed it, love it. Okay. All right, the third one, is the LSRL a reasonable fit for the data? Well, let's, let's find out. If I wanna answer that question, we wanna see if we can address all three factors. Now. Every time you, you go to figure out, yes, our model's good or not, you might not have all three of these. You do the best you can. Uh, we'll find out. I, I can make a scatter plot, I can find my R, and I can actually make a residual plot because I have the raw data here. So I should be able to address all three of those factors. All right, so let's scooch this back up so I can start to address this problem. I'm actually gonna give myself a little bit more space and I'll work the calculator on this one a little bit more. Okay, so here we go. Let's see. If I wanna figure out, is my linear model reasonable? Let's go, and I still have my scatter plot on. Okay, so as I look at this, I would say the scatter plot looks somewhat linear. It's not great, and it's not bad. It's in the middle somewhere. It's meh, is what I would say. So I would say scatter plot looks somewhat linear.
I'm not gonna give my happy face or sad face. I'm just gonna give a middle face. It's not frowning. It's not happy. It's meh. It's in the middle somewhere. Okay. The next factor that goes into this is taking a look at R. And R, I want to mention this in a couple of ways. All right. We got R from our one of our stats, if we remember it. Let me go back in time here. So R was 0.553. We can definitely get it from there, but I also want to review the mini tab. All right, so I'm going to put a little pin in the, is the LSR all reasonable? And I want to look at how we can get from here, this 30.6%, the R squared number to 0.553, okay? And I, I didn't mention this before, but it's good to mention now. Take a look at the numbers in this mini tab output, right? We can see there was the Y intercept, there was our slope, right here is our LSRL and we got the same results when we plugged our raw data into our calculator and ran stat calc 8 but you also could have read it off of the the mini tab all right but let's talk about how you go from the mini tab r squared value to the correct r value so r squared is 30.6 percent and if you want to manipulate that to get to r you need to first change this into a decimal Okay, so if our R squared is 0 0.306, then what we want to do is we want to take the square root of that number and we have to decide if we want the positive square root or the negative square root. All right, so if I'm taking a look at that, let me take the square root of 0 0.306 and what do you know? I get 0.553. Now, how do I make a decision on whether it's positive 0.553 or negative 0.553. So let me put both options right now and then let's talk about how we would make that decision. So if you don't have stat calc 8 available, let's say you didn't have your calculator available and you had the mini tab output, you could still decide whether R was positive or negative. All right, and I know you're thinking, well, if I didn't have my calculator available, I couldn't take the square root of 0.306. I'll, I'll give you that, but I, I just want to make this connection. So if your slope is positive, then R has to be positive. Those signs always match. Slope positive, R positive. If your slope is negative, R is negative. So since our particular slope is positive, we then can conclude that R is positive 0.553. All right, if R had been, excuse me, if the slope had been negative, then R would have been negative 0.553. So even if you're given a mini tab and R isn't explicitly given, it is implicit. You can do a little square root and decide on whether you want the positive or negative. All right, and then again, I'm gonna come back to this, this number, this average residual length um, when we get to the end of the chapter. So here we go, R is 0.553. So if we go back to the original question, trying to figure out, is my model a good fit? We said the scatter plot looked meh. All right, R should be close to one or negative one. It's not, it's 0.553, but it's also not zero. So again, I'm gonna give myself a medium face. All right, so let's go back to our work and let's see here. All right, so R was 0 0.553. So I'm gonna give myself the medium face. It's not happy, it's not sad. All right, but it's, it's in the middle somewhere. Okay, the last thing and the most important thing is to get that residual plot, okay? So I've got something in Y1. The last regression I did was this linear regression. So I can go make a scatter plot, excuse me, a residual plot. Let's go in here and change it to resids, okay? And then hit zoom nine again so we can see what our errors are, okay? Now, that looks like a mess, right? There is no discernible pattern in there. So I'm gonna put that the residual plot has no pattern. And I'm gonna put a super happy face because that is a really, really scattered residual plot. All right, so to answer the question, what does this all mean? Let's try and put this together, all right? So as we're going through here, is the LSRL a reasonable fit? Well, the scatter plot is somewhat linear. R is okay. 
but the residual plot has no pattern, right? In terms of stop and go, the residual plot is telling us to stop. So what it's really telling us is if we go back to our original scatter plot, all right, if I look at that thing, this isn't super linear, all right? That's what the first two factors have told us. This is moderate, okay? But what the residual plot is telling us is that there's nothing better out there. The parabola is not any better. There's not a sinusoidal curve that's better, an exponential curve that's better, a cubic, a quadratic, nothing is better. You're not gonna do any better than this linear model. And ultimately what that's telling us is there's just not a huge relationship right now between your age and your range of motion. Right? And I can't tell you how often that happens, that you think two variables might be related, you do all this regression analysis, and then in the end, you're like, oh, okay, nuts. Uh, they're not related. And that's, that's your conclusion. You find out, hey, there's just not too much of a linear relationship or any type of relationship between those two numerical variables. All right, so let's, let's work on writing this up so we can see what that would look like, okay? So I could say something to the effect of while, let me put this over here, right? While our scatter plot was somewhat linear, and our R value was moderate, and really it was moderate bordering on weak, right? I'm gonna put that in parentheses because it, it was getting closer to the weak side, right? Because moderate is from 0.5 to 0.8. This was at 0.553, so it was on the weaker side of, of that spectrum. All right, there was no pattern in the residual plot. So this, even though these two things were like meh, there's no pattern in the residual plot. All right, so what this is saying is the linear model is the best we can do, and it is a reasonable fit for the data. So I'll put my three little dots, therefore, the linear model is the best we can do. Right? We're going to stop. We're not going to look for a different model. The linear model is the best we can do. And it is a reasonable model. take it a step further it's really we're saying in the end there's just not much of a relationship between your age and the range of motion after knee surgery so I'll just put that here because that I'm gonna run out of space so in the end there isn't much of a, isn't much of a relationship between age and range of motion after knee surgery. Okay. And before we get out of here, I just want to reiterate one more thing. I want to just talk just slightly about this residual for patient number nine. So let me trace this and look for when I get the 14-year-old with 108 degrees of for the range of motion. Oh, there it was. So here we go. I just want you to see the graphic representation of a residual. So you can kind of see my flashing little X right here on my actual Y value. Right, and so this actual y value was 108, right? This is up the y-axis, 108 units. Now, what did I predict 
this y value is going to be? If you remember, I actually predicted the range of motion to be closer to 120. So you see the predicted y value is up here. All right, so graphically, this vertical drop from your actual y value to your predicted y value, that distance, that change in y is your residual. So this is a residual for that data value from actual to predicted, that's a residual, 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 residual. All these little vertical drops from your data values, your actual points to the LSRL, to the regression line, those are residuals. Right? And ultimately we want them to be super small, right? We want them to be as, we want all of these data points as close to the line as possible. So what we're predicting is what we actually see. And you can see like for a couple of them, we were pretty close, right? Here's the actual Y value, there's the predicted Y value. That's a really, really small residual, right? Actual Y value, predicted Y value, really small residual. This one we had a, a, a larger error, right? Actual to predicted, that was pretty large. And it was true also for the 14 year old. Okay, so I will catch you on the flip. We're gonna do a multiple choice question and then we're gonna pick up R squared in a little bit. All right, I'll see you in a few.